Last summer, we made a tripod set for cooking over the campfire. Welcome back to Black Bear Forge. I thought this year we would get a little earlier start on campfire cooking ideas, and we would make a different version of the classic tripod. And this one can be set up either as a tripod or as a long set of bars so you can hang multiple pots over the campfire. I had grand plans. I was going to build a fire pit and I was going to start a campfire and we were going to talk about how you use these things and show some examples as we discussed how you make these various things for campfire cooking. And I am still planning on doing a full series of campfire cooking implements from the fire irons, which is what I call the set we're making today, to some more more hooks, Dutch oven lid lifters, grills, grates, things like that that really help make campfire cooking more pleasant. But unfortunately, as I was working on the fire pit and I was getting my second wheelbarrow full of rocks to move up there, I managed to take a wrong step. And while I didn't fall down, I did land in the emergency room. And now my knee is in a brace for a week or two weeks. So there will be no more hauling rocks or pushing wheelbarrows or squatting down by fire pits to do any campfire cooking. So we're gonna start this series by making some of the implements and hopefully before we're done, we'll have that fire pit done and we'll be able to gather around the campfire to discuss just what we do with some of these things. Today's project is one of those that I used to make in quite large numbers. It's something I became very good at. It was a production item. And I'm gonna discuss some of those production issues and how I streamline and make this faster so I can make enough of these to make it worth my while to sell them at a reasonable price. I have historically made these in multiple sizes from an extra small set, a medium sized set, a large set, which is what we'll make today, and an extra large set. And you can adjust sizes and lengths. Just keep in mind the bar weight or how thick your bar stock is has a lot to do with how much weight you can hang on these when they're done. For this larger set, I start with half inch square bar, so that's 13 mil square bar. I cut three pieces 48 inches long, or that's about 1.2 meters long. Now this measurement is important when you're doing production work. I buy steel in 20 foot sticks. If you cut it in four foot lengths, you end up with five four foot pieces. If you cut it in some slightly longer or slightly shorter increment, you end up with either only four pieces and an odd scrap, or you end up with five pieces still, but you still end up with an odd scrap that you don't really need. So this makes it come out even. And when I go to the steel yard and I buy steel, when I cut my half inch bars, I don't cut them in half at 10 foot to put them in the back of the pickup and bring them home because then I only get four four foot pieces and two two foot pieces. I cut the bars instead at 12 foot so I can get three pieces out of that one and eight foot so I can get two pieces out of that. And if you buy enough bars, it eventually all comes out even in four foot pieces. Hope that all makes sense. So what do you say we get started? A gas forge is ideal for this kind of production work. You can heat all the bars up at once. Even if you're not using a power hammer, being able to put one bar back and pull out another hot bar really adds to your efficiency. Any more than about three bars in there at a time starts to be overkill. Too many irons in the fire, as they might say. Now, some of you have been asking about the Little Giant power hammer. This project is just meant for working under the Little Giant. It's going to start with three short points on the part that goes into the ground. With a short point on all three bars, the next thing I want to do is slide these through the back door of the forge so that the middle of the bar is hot, getting hot, and that's where I'm going to put a decorative twist. Now 
and these just get a simple twist. I usually don't ornament the twist too much. One time around, one and a half times around, whatever you feel like doing. But you can do fancy twists if you want to. Entirely up to you. And by squeezing the bar on the diagonal, on the diamond, we can straighten that out a little bit. And sometimes those still need just a little straightening at the anvil. Again, I work it on the diamond. I don't actually hammer the twist. If it's real off, go to a wooden block with a rawhide or a wooden mallet. I don't bother to lay these twists out. I do them by eye. If you need to, go ahead and lay it out, but do try to make them all the same. The food you're cooking over the campfire doesn't usually care too much if they match perfectly. Just close. If I'm doing multiple sets, which is the way I typically work from a production point of view, I do twists slightly different for each set so I know which ones belong together. So how did we do with our Twists being mostly the same. Looks like I actually twisted one backwards. Boy, I can't believe I did that. But otherwise, they don't look too bad. And the backwards twist really won't hurt anything either. It's just now a, uh, a style thing. The next thing we need to do is work on the other end. So we're going to let all of this cool. Typically, I do the first part of this in the morning, throw them in a pile on the floor, go to lunch. When I come back, they're cool enough to turn around and work on the other end. If you're in a hurry and you're going to quench them, at least let them get down to a black heat before you quench them. Now I have this highly specialized jig that I will use to make the bends in this so that they all come out relatively similar. I'll start by making a little curl on the end of it and that hooks around this post here. This little bar here was intended to be able to form that curl in the jig, but it doesn't really work well so I never use it. That gets bent around here then to form one leg drops down in on a second heat, then it brings it back this way. And that'll all make sense when we actually see the jig in use. And only two bars get done this way. Just give these a little clean up at the anvil and then put the curl in them by hand. I do all this in the same heat that I draw it out under the power hammer.
This is purely ornamental, so if you've got a different idea for a little scroll end, you can do whatever you feel like. And I like to cool the little curl off just so I don't mess it up. And that goes in that first position on the jig. And you go all the way around to there. In this case, it's until I hit my tripod. I'd usually go just a hair further. I'll move the tripod for the next one. And just clean it up if it needs cleaning up. Then we'll take another heat. Controlled heats are important. If you have too long a heat through here, it just makes a real wide, lazy bend, and it's real hard to get it to drop back into this second position then. So this is just what we want. And we only do this exact step to two of these. There, we can bend that one a little further. Pays to be able to walk around your anvil. Then we reinsert the bar just exactly like we had it the first time and then bend it back on itself. And depending on your heat, this may end up a little bit bigger and sloppier here than you want. That's easy to correct. I just put that over the horn and then I can bring this down if need be. If your heats are all perfect, you don't have to do that. And that's all we need for this end. Now the third bar just gets a round ring and that's important when we put these together as a tripod. And you can do that in this same jig if you want to, just by using it like a set of bending forks. Remember, these get really hot after bending a couple of these. But I actually prefer this simple jig. It's just a piece of three inch pipe with a little bar to catch the tail on that. And this is more efficient and makes the exact same size ring every time. Sometimes you have to lift it out of there depending on how much room you have in the shop to swing things. And frequently you'll have to get this hot a second time. But there again, don't get it too hot for too long of a heat on the bar or it'll start bending really big down in here. That's all I do on this jig. Now we're going to go to the horn. And I just straighten that out so that the ring sits centered over the top here. That's really about all there is to that. Now to set your fire irons up as a tripod, it's really just a matter of linking the ring to the two hooks. This is perhaps not as secure as a regular tripod, but I almost never set them up like this. The beauty of this set is that you can set it up as a crossbar. You just drive that in the ground a little bit. How deep depends on how solid your ground is. It's nice if they're fairly level across the top, and then this just goes right across there. And you can hang two or three pots. Generally, I would say this set is large enough for a family of four. The next size smaller, I make out of 3 8 square bar, and I start with three feet of 3 8 square bar. The next size up starts with five feet of 5 8 square bar. 
So you can just adjust and adapt based on what you need. And if you're never going to set it up as a tripod, you don't really need the ring. The set, the set I use all the time actually has ram's heads on the end. So you can just do whatever you want with it, depending on what your needs are. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I do hope this is something you can use around your campfire. Make some time to get out to your shop, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.